Welcome everybody to the Monday, February 6th joint meeting of the Conway Select Board and the Conway Finance Committee. Uh, I'm sitting back here. Like, speaking loudly. I'm speak sitting back here speaking loudly um, so that my heating pack can be plugged in. Um, so I call the meeting to order. And first I vote to approve the minutes of January 30th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, give no warrants. Meetings attended by select board members. Chris. Uh, I attended the planning board meeting on Thursday and also attended a, not meetings, but a couple uh, meetups with uh, Jan Amin and Berenice to go over a transfer station presentation for Thursday. And I must say, the work product so far that I've seen is impressive. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Well done. Let's hope people show up to. Okay. Exactly. Um, Erica? No, I was supposed to attend the first class meeting on Thursday, but my transportation issues are quite diverse. I was not able to actually attend that meeting. Good call. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I had the, the my, my favorite meeting was the first meeting of the hiring committee so that, that for the police chief so that that's actually getting started it's, it's not the hiring committee it's the it's initial the stand yeah yes thank you um public comments so joint should we, should, should we do the finance committee well we stuff? can't because we don't have a quorum okay. yet. No, he's not. well that's good for the board of health perspective <laughs> <laughs> but are they so. trying to join I don't know. I'm okay. check. I haven't I gotten anything an email from them. I'm assuming the answer. Oh, yes. okay. Hold on. I got one from John. It says Erica has gone to the personal meeting room. I did while I was testing. <laughs> oh, Rihanna's here. We have a forum. Oh, great. Okay. All right. <laughs> They didn't ask me to admit you. Hi. Do you show up? So I can call so, the, oh, I can call oh, the finance okay. committee in order. Alan, do you mind if we just do so that the board the, 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 of health here is just on one, one item? To yeah, talk about, about, about the opioid. Yeah, about spending. So we can keep Have you read it? The, uh, fine. Have you read the book about the slackers yet? <laughs> no. No. Some best sellers. Yeah. So, so if it's okay with the finance committee, you know, just move ahead to the one item of new business since the Board of Health representatives are here. Um, discussion, no vote with the Board of Health on use of opio opioid funds. So this is with regard to one of former Attorney General Maury Healy, now Governor Maury Healy, uh, class action lawsuits, Conway's share of there, there's uh, there's two more of these opi opioid funds in, in the works. Um, but this is the first one Conway shared with 74. 74,550 yeah. over yeah. A, seven, a 16 year payout period. So what, and what, what the select board talked about last time um, was a, a <laughs> desire to uh, more Narcan, um, for the library, for the, for this building, um, and a defibrillator as well for okay. this building. Um, but that's uh, other than that, we're all ears. So, do you have any ideas about? We do actually. Yeah. Um, what the Board of Health would like to see is combining some of that money with other area towns to create more opportunities for programs to uh, be facilitated, um, both for individuals, families, uh, people that are affected by the opioid crisis. There are, uh, there's no, no way to say that not a single person hasn't been touched in some way, because whether it's you yourself are struggling with an active addiction or a member of your family or your community, we all are affected. 
And by combining with other towns, we should be able to bring um, more programs into all the different areas and attack a, tackle it from different fronts. So that's what we would like to request that some of the monies uh, be used to combine. If not, I, I know uh, if you have an in, intention of doing a defibrillator, and we've talked about um, doing some Narcan education and having it available. We talked about that in our last meeting as um, a use of some of the money, but it would be an important piece, I think, to allow a bigger community to be strengthened financially to be able to support people. Are you talking about a group that already exists, like ServiceNet or Community Action? Or well, it would be working with, um, in some cases, uh, the some of them require a participation with the recovery project, but these are to supplement, not to replace active programs. So um, there's uh, bringing in recovery coaches uh, to community areas, such as food pantries or libraries to help um, educate people and support people as needed to provide legal services. Uh, there's an opportunity to help strengthen a navigator at the Franklin County, uh, um, Bay State Franklin and their emergency department that's in the works, but by combining monies with other uh, opioid recipients, we'd be able to help ensure that some of these programs move forward. Um, Are you doing it in with the uh, EMTs? Yes, there's an opportunities to provide extra uh, education and support services so that EMTs are better. Um, uh, I was saying with the funding to go through any of the courses. They, they already have access to a lot to do a lot of stuff. I, I, yes. I had asked, you know, they don't, they have all the North they have all. The, yes, I'm, I, I know. They're all, I'm they go to courses on that stuff. Right, right. But there, there's a, uh, probably about 25 different uh, programs that have been uh, looked at as possibilities for a shared opioid monies uh, to support. And, um, and some of it is education, education for the police departments and other uh, active first responders to come upon a scene uh, that without the support of a collective thing may be less likely or may, maybe wouldn't be as readily available. So um, so that's what we would like to, to see happen with some of the money. And another thing is <clears throat> there's some programs called Train the Trainer on Narcan. And I am uh, going to be taking one of those programs and I could see uh, maybe having the opportunity at the library, church, wherever, that it's not the person taking narcotics themselves, but perhaps their family who sees they need something, you know. And the good thing about Narcan is it doesn't really have a downside. So you think that your family member is having problems because of opioids. You don't have to be absolutely sure. You can go ahead and give the Narcan, which is a uh, the easiest way is intranasal, and that's what we'd be using and training with. And that's even before the EMTs get there, you know, uh, an opportunity for family members to come in and learn how to use it also. And any questions they have, I can help them. This, so this money is like $74,000 over 16 years? Yeah, approximately so, $4,659.68 a year. And so does it have to be, so that's like the amount of money that we have to figure out how to allocate each year. It's like we don't get it as a lump sum. So we, Correct. we don't. However, um, I'm going to be looking into putting an article um, at annual town meeting to create a stabilization fund. For this so that we could save it up for a couple of years and really it would have more of an impact I think, that way. Do we have any idea when the other settlement monies might start coming in? I, I personally do not as of right now. I haven't heard that uh that specific data. Okay. 
The, the other thing that um, I, I know some of the other, at least two of the other select boards from our four town school district is, you know, we, they, uh, an adolescent psychologist with a specialization in addiction, um, with adolescent addiction uh, at Frontier, because we don't have one of those. Right. And uh, that's the, the desire to be there, have a support net. You know, that that was also I mentioned something like that as pulling our money. Obviously, just Conway putting in their little bit isn't going to pay this person. Right. But pulling our resources, yeah, maybe we could have something like that. Nip it in the bud and get them on the right track, perhaps. And we used to, we used to be. Um, that person lost the job so that we could hire a full time police officer. That's the choice that the school made. Mm -hmm. Kind of nasty objection. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, so. Yeah, I think, I think the more uh, that we can support people uh, that are active users or to prevent or to encourage or discourage the getting into that, um, the more that we're able to make it better for the whole community yeah. as a whole. And if being able to provide services for the high school um, is part of that, and we were able to use what in reality is a small portion of money that we would be getting um, to make that happen. What better use, you know? Uh, the way that they determine the amount of money that uh, we get in our community is based upon the amount of opioid prescriptions that, the, that people in our town have. So, um, rather than get to the point where we have a lot of people that need uh, a lot of that's uh, the potential to make it be a problem, then I think the better we're off, off we are. And if we can contribute to make that happen, it's well worth the money. So, but for this year, we just have to decide what to do with that. Forty-six, forty-five hundred dollars, right? Yes, it has to be appropriated at the town at the meeting, yeah. the annual town meeting. Yeah. And yeah. you, as the board of health, you would prefer that we put that towards supporting other communal efforts or investing in, like, you know, Narcan at the church and training at the church, and like Narcan at the library. Or, what? I mean, what do you guys really feel like we should be doing with this money that we have for this year? I really feel like some money is well spent on Narcan. And um, when I take the program, there's a certain amount of Narcan available just because you're a trainer. And I'm not sure how much that is. I'm not sure how much we'll need. You know, our family members gonna come, uh, are they gonna feel stigmatized? Even though it, it it's not necessarily somebody overdosing all the time. It could be an accidental overdose. When someone takes their medicine, their opioid prescription, forgets they took it, takes it again, gets really tired and their breathing slows down, you know, maybe they need a well American. What's the show point? I was just going to ask that same Yeah, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> <that's laughs> good Jen, I have some out in my car right now. I mean, should we also be investing in like a refrigerator? You know, so like, you know, I don't have all those answers oh. yet. I haven't even taken the program. That's a good question. So, I can't room temperature. All right. It doesn't think, think so because yeah. they're outside the kiosks. Yeah, but the shelf life is good in the sense of this, if it's not used, how often does it need? Well, we can we yeah. can come back to you with that data, but I, I do think. I mean, I think the idea of having that can available in town is a good thing, um, but if and we'd have to look specifically, can we put a certain amount that we can contribute into a bigger pool and still take care of what we feel are the needs of our town? So but, at town meeting this year, we're going to have to have the town vote to take from free cash what was given to us last year because it rolled over into free cash because we didn't have an account set up for it yet. Right. So we'll have two years worth, hopefully, at town meeting this year that we can 
I ask the town to vote on. It'll be like nine thousand dollars, about forty five hundred dollars a year. Roughly, I think. I'm so sorry. It's all right. I prefer not to break my hold in this. So I, I definitely will we'll be happy to come back and uh, and talk about the shelf life and that sort of thing, um, if, if that was okay. No, we keep on talking about dividing the total sum by the years. Is that necessary or is that just an approach that? It comes into us annually. Okay. So if we want to save it up, we're just going to have to kind of keep banking until we get to whatever amount people want to expend it on. I, you know, I mean, 74,000 over 16 years, it's going to be a while before. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually 17 years. Six, oh, yeah, I think it is. Uh, yeah, anyway. But so. that's like the number we have to work with, which is like around. Yeah. Roughly, but there's Correct. another one that we're going to be applying for. So I, I really couldn't tell you, which is another reason to set up this stabilization yeah. fund, yeah. you know, so we can keep track of it in one place. And, well, the finance committee have to make a motion to set up, agree to set up a stabilization fund. We don't need to vote now, but we're going to. Well, we appreciate that you uh, are taking time out of your meeting to uh, to meet with us. And thank you very much. Honestly, discussions on how to spend money. These are like the least stressful of all of our discussions, yeah. even if it is a stressful topic. <laughs> But still, generally one of the more enjoyable tasks, I would say. Sure. All too rare. All right. Are we ready for the finance committee stuff? Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. A motion to call the finance committee joint meeting with the select board for water. All right. Thank you. So we'll just take them by order. First, we have to oh, the, the select boards first. So yeah, sorry, I can't put these up on the screen, but I can tell you all, which this one is simply level funded from last year. So unless there's some changes. I didn't have anything. I don't know if any board members have any reason to change anything. <laughs> Um, so, uh, okay, if I move on to the next one. Yeah, okay, so town, town administration is the next one. Um, I want to point out in the hourly assistance of the boards, I've increased that amount by, I think it's 1040, because it just made more sense to roll Louise's position with the fire department into that, so. Um, and let's see here, I've taken a number of the categories down, such as the mileage, professional, professional services. I took down postage, looking at what's been expended in the pre -year, prior years, I think taking it from four to three makes sense, but the postage going up, hopefully I'm correct. But what about your professional tax services? Because years past, 20, it was 2,600, it was 1,500, you're going down to 500? Um, I'm trying to remember actually, sorry, why that is that it went down so much. The expenditures went um, down too. Yeah, I mean, I've only spent 300 this year, so I'll double check that one. But, oh, I don't know how we do some subscriptions I took down price. 900 and trainings and meetings. I kept the same just because I didn't go to MMA this year, but I'm hoping to go next year. Um, contracted services, I took down because it seemed to be kind of less. I took the town report up because I just don't know costs of that kind of thing tend to go up. And I just want to make sure we have enough to cover. Um, yeah. So, and the adver advertising, um, whose budget is the future tree, uh, shade tree commission adver uh, advertising going to be 
under. I, I put that into the tree warden, remember? Okay. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I just remembered what the professional technical, that tends to be the um, the physicals for new employees. So that's why it, it can kind of go all over the map because you never know how many people you can do in one year, but my bolt just went off on that one. So. Do we have to do that? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's code word for drug test. You have to you have to call the physical and and, and we don't it would, it would be for drug tests. No, no, it's just a it's just a routine physical. What you cut? Uh, I think it's fifty bucks. No, it's like two or three hundred. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, the police chief you might be looking to hire. Going to have to have a have a lease. Um, honestly, yeah. I think they have their own. Um, Screen. screenings, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> our own physical exam, one one mile ten, one mile run time. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're all applicants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any other questions about that one? Mm -hmm. Um. So the legal budget for town, which is basically just town council, um, we, we took it up a thousand last year, just in the expectation that we might have more on the books, you know, dealing with buying properties and that kind of thing. It does not seem to have been expended that much. So especially since you see that's as of January, the end of January, you know, we haven't even spent half of it yet. So I thought I'd take it down a thousand back to what it was. So that's two budgets that have gone down. <laughs> oh, you know what? And I just realized Roy can't get in. Right. That's an IT budget. All right, that's where you have to talk about. It. Well, I'm wondering if you want to put this on next week because Roy can't be yeah, here. Probably good idea. Yeah. I mean I'll, it's not Roy's, it's not Roy's fault. It's our technical issues, which are not Roy's fault. They're, Wait, yeah, ah, no, that's not Roy's fault. fault is it? <laughs> it's it's me in the Zoom, and I don't. Well, Roy just texted me before and said uh, he's aware of the of the budget situation. He uh, might re he's going to revise his IT budget. He should shave off a couple of thousand, so probably we should read. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah let's we'll wait. Let's wait then. That's okay. Yeah. Great. Because okay. I I had noticed the proposed budget is like an eight percent increase. Well, the software and subscription is where I have questions. Yeah, because it's like far above what it was. All right, so we'll put, we'll table that to next week. All right. Okay. So the next one was the planning board, and if Beth is trying to get in tonight too, then. Um, but I can tell you that originally she had put in there nine thousand dollars for stipends. They don't have stipends, and she is highly recommending, but. She's aware of the budget constraints for this year. So she took it out. The only thing that went up was um, advertising by $100. So people who serve on the planning board currently not get stipends. No, they do not need it as conservation and planning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, right. Wait, zoning. So don't get any stipends. Yeah, like, you know, Board of Health gets a stipend and, um, I don't know, animal control, EMD, there's, well, actually, in the most different, things, but anyway, there are there are a couple that do get stipends. So, right. well, the planning board's a recent uh, creation. No, I don't know yeah, how the board was select. It used to be the select board, yeah. Right. Well, we never yeah. had a zoning, a, a zoning bylaw, uh, so, uh, we never had subdivision bylaw before. So, for, for years and years and years, there was Spagowski. Mm -hmm. Select board oh, chair first year. thought strategic ambiguity that if you don't have any bylaws, then developers should never know what their costs might be. <laughs> and, and there's truth to that. The, 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 those subdivision bylaws are written like writ large by built by builders mm -hmm. so that they know they can they can go into a town and know what it's going to cost for a project. Mm -hmm. And when they have nothing but question marks behind whatever we just so. That was the whole theory, um, and eventually, uh, eventually, somebody took advantage of that in a proposed subdivision on Flag Mountain, 
which ended up not going through. But that was the reason that we, we ended up applying and getting or writing our own subdivision bylaws. That, and that was the reason why the planning board then needed to be separate because all of a sudden they, they were going to have to have hearings on everything. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions on that? Okay. Well, right. the next one is the personnel committee, which we do not have <laughs> currently, so we're just well, the, 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 the planning board. The one that oh. the one that that submitted is going to be revised. The one you have says nine thousand dollars. Yes. It has been revised our mind to the bottom line is 2350 which is $100 over last year. Okay. And that was just for the advertising going up $100. Yes. Sorry, mm -hmm. I forgot that that was the one that we don't have the mm -hmm. correct one that has been changed since I sent it to you. All right, so personnel is just the $1 for holding. Mm -hmm. um, town insurance, I do not have a number yet, but I was told to pop in a 5%. So he's a placeholder. So that's what that is. Yeah. My understanding is that the workers' comp is going to go down this year from our system based on our law history. Could be. Could be. Which might make up I haven't for, looked at it recently. Which might make up for that 5%. It could. Well, what we we end up getting a credit back instead, you know. So all right. So the next one is emergency management is just level funded. As a matter of fact, the next two were level funded. <laughs> General liability insurance. Uh, Tom had a question. The uh, increase as year. We had a budgeted forty three nine fifty. We spent just under sixty nine thousand seven hundred. Oh yeah. So what there. happened is you see the the workers comp. It it wasn't split out. Oh all right. Doesn't include workers comp. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry about that. Yep, <laughs> Okay, so the, the 291 emergency management is level funded at 4,250. Um, I have not gotten the bill this year for Blackboard Connect, which is a, a big part of this. So I'm, I'm hoping that may have to go up if they bump up their costs for us, but. So what line is that, Is there any? Uh, it's the 380, the 1500. Okay. And if you can see, so what happened is in FY20 and 22 emergency management equipment, there was like two lines for it. I don't know why. So I'm trying to get rid of the 850 because they already had emergency alert system, which is actually the Blackboard Connect. I'm trying to, as we go through the years, I'm trying to simplify mm -hmm. these and show what's really being spent on. So, <laughs> so yeah. And um last is newsletter and i'm pleased to say well it's level funded and if we do need more money for any reason we do have an advertising budget so yeah. we have a revenue stream so yeah. if there's something else we need we can always pull from that the town can advertise for new committee and whatever we appropriate <laughs> it's not spent that's to go back to free cash um no there's actually a, a, a special revenue fund Okay. for it so it, it stays year to year so okay. yeah we don't have to worry about it going away this was much less painful than this. <laughs> <laughs> well, this I have the a, yeah. Work, right? yeah, yeah. Well, well i have a question you know, in terms of uh, i don't know if you're going to do a percog competitive salary analysis but 
know, if it does come down to, we have to make certain personnel choices or funding you know, position cuts, whatever. Are we looking at maybe keeping people at a certain wage rather than try to have the same people, but not keep up with competitive wages or have fewer positions, but pay people more? I mean, I'm just throwing it out of an I just keep throwing it out there. I, I don't consider. think we've gotten to that discussion yet, but I'm people. sure it'll certainly be coming because once we get to dealing with the rest of the budget and the whole, you know, how much money, because I, I mean, I know just between the highway materials, the cost of health insurance, the cost of our debt this year, um, this year and next year, you know, that's where most of this increase is coming from. Yeah. So. Thank you. I've never been a real big fan of using that survey for much of anything, the Burkhardt survey. I think there's so many different data points. You can use that survey to support whatever argument you want. And um, and, and that basically we're, we're tricked in, usually tricked into uh, comparing apples and oranges mm -hmm. and comparing towns that that do, you know, that have a 50% copay on their health insurance mm -hmm. um, versus our 20% pay, copay. And, you know, and then and then not you know, and then matching them on salary as well. Yeah, and things like that. And we pay seventy percent, not not the school teachers. Yeah, yeah, town, right. Seventy-five percent. Seventy-five percent. Thank you. The uh, well, I guess we have the importance of the towns are doing too, just because we obviously have to compete for uh, for people. We can pay less, or relatively, comparatively less, but if people, people don't necessarily care about the health benefits of their partners, probably becomes more issue. And the Perkog itself, their salary increases from oh yeah, well, you know, they, three different phases. Some got four percent, some got six percent, some got eight percent. Yeah. They get a lot of grants every year too. So. Thank you. So I, I did ask, just so you're aware, I did ask Jan um, to work with me on on getting um, just for a reference point two two and a half three percent bola column again like last year. So yes. that's on the spreadsheet that I just sent. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so that you know contractually, our teachers and our teachers' aid are all getting two percent this year. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And that's it. So I uh, make a motion that we have to adjourn the finance committee and we're going to select for it. All right. Thank you. See you next week. Thank you all. Thank you. Will we have the technologies resolved for next week? I am. I just I was texting with Roy. Yeah. I said, can we work on this tomorrow? Yeah. That was, that's got to be your number one. Are we meeting at 6 o'clock next week? You know, wherever? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I missed my thing. Thank you. 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 And basically, uh, town meeting gave the final vote on spending. The select board cannot contradict or contravene a town meeting vote. The town meeting is authorized the spending of the budgets from last year. Um, the only thing that a moratorium would be would be discretionary funding that's not specifically set forth in the town meeting line approved line item budget. Free cash, is that free cash? But uh, town meeting has to approve that too. So I don't know where where we would have. I don't know where we would have. Well, if it wasn't approved by town meeting, but wasn't you know like uh, so, but locks, like 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 locks and furniture and things like that. So the question is, what are we what are we actually trying to decide? So, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we're voting on a moratorium, but we're trying to decide exactly what the moratorium is. Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, yeah, it's it sounds it sounds impressive. It sounds like we're doing something. <laughs> and who wants to part? But so so from my perspective, I just would need to know 
how I directed department heads. You know, for instance, I just heard of another incident next door. We really need to change the locks. We just have to. It's the security over there is just it has to be addressed. So, you yeah. know, if we're saying a moratorium means I can't do that until next fiscal year, you know, and, and, and what exactly does it mean if we say moratorium? I mean, believe me, I'm, I'm all in favor of not spending if we don't have to. I think pretty much everybody is, but I just need to know how to direct the department heads to say, well, this you can spend it on this, but not on that, you know? I mean, is there nothing like, it, I mean. If it's approved, if it was in their budget and it was approved by town meeting, then, or if it was envisioned as part, it was part of a line item budget, and it was, then they're already authorized to spend it, and the select board can't say no. If it's not envisioned, if it's oh, there's extra money in my budget, uh, let, let, let I want to do this, then. So it's really a question of like, you have an approved budget. There's money left over. That's been approved that you might. It's is 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 the issue like trying to get departments not to see this money left over in your budget? It's free cash that we can spend on whatever wasn't actually approved at town meeting. The, see, the trouble is that you have different lines in each budget, and yeah, there are there are items that come up like the slot with not anticipated. So, what do you do about that? I mean, personally, I would say we need to take care of that, but. It's, so I guess what I'm saying is you have the office supplies line, which is where I would take it out of probably, yeah. or maybe building maintenance. Well, that's already approved by town meeting. So, you know, how do you say yes or no? You know what I mean? It, it, and I, I mean, I guess we, I, I'm not sure how to word it. We can always make saying. exceptions too. If there, or if people aren't sure, ask and we can decide. But Jen, you know, we don't want to stop government from performing the essential services right. that government does. But at the same time, we 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 want to head off what appears to be a looming fiscal cliff. Um, we don't want to just drive off the cliff without, you know, and, and that's just when you're looking at more than a double deck of a possibility from reading the tea leaves at more than a double digit increase in our town's assessment um, at the budget, that's that's brutal. And we need to do everything we can to. So I mean, that's just. So so just to be clear for those, what 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 this would do would be to allow more money to be turned over for free cash for fiscal twenty five. Well, when it's when it's certified actually in September, and then you know it would be available. Just and right. So, so I mean, and if we do a special town meeting again, then that's. Mm -hmm. It's departments waiting for six months to want some things, but um, regard regardless, you know that we 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 hope to avoid layoffs. We hope, I mean, all, like uh, our neighboring towns are planning on layoffs. I already know. I've already heard these things. That as soon as you get these notice that your health insurance is going up six percent, your retirement stuff is going to be going up. Um, Burkhog is going, everything is going up more than, you know, and, but, but our revenue doesn't go up. So something's got to get, and the, the only, you know, we got to squeeze where we can squeeze and we can't squeeze very much, but, uh, we got to do what we can do. And it's because it's, you know, the record numbers, you look at our demographics that you put out that, that I, I saw in an email that went out, you, some, somebody asked you for a, a snapshot of the town's demographics. And on paper, we look like we're, we're, we're like the richest town in the county. We really do. We got the high, one of the highest tax rate. And we, and yet at the same time, we have record numbers of people applying in this town, applying for heating assistance, emergency heating assistance. And anecdotally, we have record numbers of people in line at food banks <clears throat> and uh, from, from this town. And um, you know that just people need help. And I, I don't understand why on the data we they, I don't know the the, the, the data that, that the, the statistic that you show shows that there's like nobody's hurting. If you look at that, it looks like everybody's doing great. 
Town is super homogeneous. So, so how would you specifically word this if you were going to vote on the moratorium? Um, well, a freeze on on spending not not authorized prior to the freeze. So that would basically mean that every department can spend their budget. Their budget, so yeah, what's yeah. been expended. And, and by law, we can't say we, we can't say otherwise. Town but, meeting is supreme. But right, so so I'm not really even quite sure what that means because that means it, it was approved at town meeting. Say in in the town administrator's budget, I could still spend up until the limit of the budget. I mean, there isn't there isn't discretionary. Spending, you know what I mean? Unless we come to the finance committee and ask for a reserve transfer, there isn't anything outside of what has been budgeted for each of our departments. So I'm not quite sure. We, we can certainly say to everybody, we're not going to spend more than spend. has already been approved yeah. at yeah. town meeting, but that's, I mean, but that's already been approved at town meeting. I don't feel like we can fall back what we've already approved. Right. I mean, we can certainly say, you know, and I will certainly do my best to not spend, you know, I mean, obviously we need toner, we need whatever, paper right. and stuff. Well, but I think, even, I mean, we, but we have a lot of level funded budgets and yeah. budgets that even like they're level funded, but they haven't expanded their full budget over the past couple of years. Right. Um, I mean, I like, I, I totally get the, uh, you know, whatever the feeling behind, I mean, I get this. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how that's any different yeah. than us having already voted on a town budget, and we already know what. We're well, I said it looks like the moratorium. It looks like they're doing something. Uh, so it. okay, I mean, if that's but, like you know, um, if, if we want to say we're not going to spend, the then the yeah, the optics are really I then fine. It's moratorium on spending beyond what we've already approved. At town meeting, but so what's the worst case scenario? I, I'm just trying to understand this. Like the worst case scenario would be a committee or a position asking for more money than they know they need because they know that they can spend it on something else that they might need that's not going to town meeting. But you see, in each of the lines, have to spend it on the lines that are already so they have to spend it on those lines. Yeah. So what happens if they don't spend all the money on those lines? Technically, they do. However, the way it's put out, salaries that's one amount, expenses is another, and you can't expend over the salary. Everything in the lines within the expenses, you can go more on one line and less on another. For instance. We didn't put in the budget last year the transfer station, 15,000 for the Merck fees. It was a gamble we did. Turns out we're having to pay. But I have enough in my budget. I'm, I'm marking it in the Merck fees. So you see exactly where it's supposed to be. But I have enough in that budget to cover it. So, you know, I'm not, what was that authorized at town meeting? No, because the budget said zero. But, you know, because there's enough of my expense lines to cover it without going over the bottom line of the expenses, it's allowable. Do you see what I mean? So it's kind of hard to, and that happens sometimes with line items. And that's one of the things that in trying to get a better handle on this, making sure that all the line items actually say what they're being spent on, because that's how you get closer to really right. knowing what you're, you're asking for in your budget. Um, but I don't think you don't want to vote on all of those line items at town meeting we don't. either. Yeah, exactly. No, we don't. So if you don't want to be like, oh, well. No, it's the bottom line. I yeah, guess that's the bottom, bottom line. line. It's, it's, like top line. it's the top line. It's the, yeah, it's the top line that it's voted on. And in the end, I, I mean, I, but, personally, but, I feel like I want to give like those department heads like the discretion to say like, okay, I have this X amount of money in my budget and, you know, I had to put new locks on the doors. So I know that I have that in my budget because I'm not spending as much on, I don't know, printer paper. But, but. I mean, yeah, yeah, yes or no, it's a fine yeah. line to that yeah. because, yes. because at the same time, the, the, the residents, you know, you, you need to know your consent has to be informed. Like if, if you're voting on, 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 on how many, how, how much of your tax dollars you're willing to let the government spend. Um, your consent has to be informed. Those line items have to mean what they say they need. And um, and yes, there should be room. And uh, but at the same time, like th there has been a culture 
in some departments in town um, that were trying to change that, you know, where numbers haven't been changed in years and they do not reflect line, you know, individual line items have not reflected reality and um, you know, at all, like not even close. Well, I mean, that should be showing up in the comparisons through the other years and, you know. Unless the same fictions have been have been carried on for years and years. But I don't know how you could have a, a fiction in there because you can see what's expended on each line. So I'm not sure what you mean by a fiction. Um, a certain a certain line item. I mean, I, I don't want to blame it any, any I don't, in this context, I don't want to use any single department as an example because they're not here to defend themselves. Um, but the, you know, we, we know from prior experience that last year's budget meeting or was it the year before where we really had this discussion with the department head uh, that, you know, where they said all of a sudden you're the first, you're the first select board that's ever said that these line items have to, have to, you know, that they have to bear some resemblance to reality. Like nobody ever cared before. It didn't matter. You know, it's my budget and I can just spend it and how I see fit. And that's just not the way. So there's a fine line between what Eric was saying, like flexibility and sort of truth in budgeting. It's not even that fine, really, like in terms of how it's been treated in this town in the past. Well, but, I, I agree with you. But like I said, when you look at each of these individual spreadsheets and you look line by line and you can see what's been spent, it's not, you know, unless they've been, you know, um, Marking it to a different line, you know, but that's still no. The, all, all that that is doing, you're, 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 that, that is not that's that's all that that is doing is showing that the same fictions have been going on for years. That the same, um, you know, fictional cat fictional line items uh, are, are are being drawn down every year, year after year. That's all. But they don't, but they don't reflect the reality of what what it's been spending on. Uh, but we have a, an accountant. I feel like yeah, we could really like we could drill down to that level of detail. Yeah, that that's not been my experience in going over any of these budgets with any of the departments. Your memory has already receded. Yeah, I've already <laughs> forgotten these major. No, <laughs> it may be bad, but when it comes to the budget, no, no. <laughs> this was this was this is a real thing. And there's um, so so again, technically, what exactly are are we saying? Because if you say we're we're uh, you know you can't tell them not to spend it because town meeting approved it, then what does a moratorium actually mean? Uh, like I said, it's good optics, and it, but they're going to ask me. <laughs> well, a moratorium means we are not going to spend any more money than was appropriated at town meeting. You could literally say that, but I but I still I I I don't totally understand. The, the point of this. But they can't vote, spend more than was approved at town meeting anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So, so that's why I'm like, I, I just don't understand what my, how I'm, I'm supposed to direct the department heads. I can certainly say to them, please do not spend if you don't need to. Hold it off. You know, and I can go over um, the, as they come in and look at it and question the department heads. But you know. So the answer is this is a primarily symbolic action that we're taking that does not impact the the the, the previously approved budget for most department for, for the departments. However, it is our way of saying that we're in trouble fiscally in this town at this town meeting, and please do everything you can to save them. Well, our I mean, do we know that that's in fact we're in trouble for this? For we do. Meeting? Uh, well, the budget's going to be, it's going to be yeah, very, gonna yes, be yeah, yeah, for going for FY24. Yeah, yes. I mean, yes. We, we will be very hard pressed to avoid a double digit increase. Yeah, but, but and, and that's a bad place to be. Go. I always thought that when you said the moratorium on something that meant that there was a freeze. Yeah, that's right? what I thought. We can't freeze the spending that we've already approved. There is a process that you can declare that, you know, that, for instance, the DLA has come in and enforced an immediate freeze at some point at, 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 to towns. And there is a process where you can ask for permission to declare, but you have to really be like that. That's not based on projection, that's based on reality. Like your, your tax receipts were way under what they promised. 
has been all that stuff. I'm sorry. So we're going to be what we're putting on. Yeah, no, it's, it's, symbolic, it's a symbolic, yeah. empty, relatively meaningless gesture okay. that says that we're broke um, and that we need help from everybody. Well, could I just simply pass that on to the department heads and say at this select board meeting, it was, you know, unanimously requested of all departments to expend as little as possible for the rest of the fiscal year. I use the That's word right. moratorium. I'm, I'm going to get a lot of our yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll questions. Um, something that we've already voted on. Like, we have, like, this is money that we have. Be, be so much for empty yes. detail gestures. Fiscally responsible. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I specialize in empty detail gestures. <laughs> <laughs> And I can even say, in order to preserve free cash for next fiscal year, which is going to be a really difficult fiscal year, because mm -hmm. that's the only thing we're going to get out of is free cash. So, right, but which is good. That means yeah. good. Yeah. So the December meeting, that's real cash. Yep. Yep. Vote to appoint Phyllis Crane. Chris, yes. Tell us, about, tell us about your new recruit. Well, I don't know really much about Phyllis aside from uh -oh. Uh -oh. that she <laughs> is not, not the ringing endorsement I've said before. <laughs> she is retiring at the end of June. Um, she's already on the zoning board. And she has requested to join, uh, to be the uh, join the last open seat of the capital improvement board or committee. And uh, I know Veronique, you gave a thumbs up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, she she it was wonderful. She came and said, you know, like you said, I'm retiring soon, and I want to get more involved with the town. And she was asking for which committees. So I said personnel and capital improvements. And and she would be our only female, so I am definitely down for that. <laughs> to have some, some some diversity. Um, that counts for diversity in Conway. It does. It does. So uh, I would I would like to bring her to the table and fill that last remaining seat. Um, we have a lot to discuss, especially about the budget for the highway department. So um, another uh, voice ear. Uh, to have would be very helpful, I think. So I would definitely like to move forward right. to vote for Phyllis Crane to join the Capital Improvement Committee. For a term ending June 30, 2025. All in favor? Aye. 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 Second. Yeah, I'll second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> It's unanimous. Welcome, Phyllis, wherever you are. I don't think you're on Zoom. <laughs> it's so trying. I'm sure John has told her. <laughs> uh, items not anticipated 48 hours. Do we have anything? Town administrator update. Well, please take the first thing off of there because I forgot that that was before the last meeting. So obviously, uh, Chris and I had already talked with Ron last week. Um, so uh, the Public Buildings Committee met. Um, and we had a really good conversation about all the things that you know that we need to take care of in the project proposal, siltation, SOC, and where we're going to put all the materials during excavation and that kind of thing. Um, and we just got a actually today uh, an updated survey, so that's wonderful. So we're well on our way to having everything we need for the public hearing on the twenty eighth. And then, as Phil mentioned, we had our first screening committee meeting, and 
um, which went really well. Our, the application deadline for applications is February 17th for the police chief position. And we've got three so far. So, um, and the intention of the committee is to have that to the select board for your process to begin on March 13th. And can I add something to that? Of so course. <laughs> Just, well, it's your it's your moment. It's your moment in the sun. You know, it's your it's your, it's your report. Um, nobody likes their report stepped all over by somebody else. But um, but yeah, you know, I just wanted to know. So it, it is our current um, and and you know, it, it, Ken, Kenny was like, it's a really good idea to have your new person in place for 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 this budget process because it's a unique thing and it's not written down. It's based on custom and practice. And this, you know, you, you want them there to witness how it's done um, before they're on their own having to do it. So I, we thought that that was good advice. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're like truncating this whole process and making it so that God willing, and if the creek don't rise, we can have someone in place, um, you know, for April. Right around that, that's that's what we're looking at, like beginning of April, right at the end of March. Right now. Having that. So that was it. That was my carry on. Um, so on Friday, I did get to submit an expression of interest um, for this round of municipal vulnerability preparedness program grants, which means that when you put that in, it just means that they'll the MVP team will be able to review it and give you feedback which they can't do once the grant application opens up later in the spring. So, um, and I've sent it out to the team that we had working on it last year and got some really great feedback. So, so that's moving forward. Um, and just to keep things in perspective, you know, we put out that survey to town employees about their priorities and this came as number five. I think number one was public safety. Number two was land preservation and restoration. Number three was moving all the town offices over to town hall. Number four was keeping taxes low, which we're working hard on this year. And then that was number five. So, um, and I know I just said there was something else I forgot that I did on Friday. Oh, I'm sorry, it was, just mentioned it. It was Jim meeting with Jan about the transfer station public forum. So, and just so people um, are aware as well, it's posted on the website. Um, but the uh, Mass DOT is having a public forum hearing as well on the replacement bridge. Yeah, so do we yeah. all have to, because I was going to, it's like you have to register to like participate. You have to was, register, okay, yeah, right, to so participate. And it's all virtual. It's not all right. in any physical spot. And that's, they're, they're looking for feedback from residents um, about the bridge. Just to let you know, there was a discussion of, well, could you, the temporary bridge is almost done. I mean, it might even be this week that they're, you know, which is just unbelievable and amazing. There, there was a question, well, could you put another temporary bridge on the side while you're building the real replacement bridge, which will not happen. But the plan is to only have it shut down the day after school and, and have it open before school begins again. So it'll just be that truncated summer construction. So, yeah. yeah. With all the roads, we'll be open and not have any. Right, yeah, right. It'll be a lot less of a hassle, and that's how it was done before. One of the other bridges on that point, so and that's all I have. That's all she wrote. Um, so that for concerns, anybody? Yeah, we're broke. We broke, we're badly bent. <laughs> um, now, so just a couple things we the uh. The dog, the dog, the dog people, the, the uh, our dog, our, our new dog catcher, the sheriff's department. They have a dinner that they want us to go to. Nice. We don't, we don't know anybody. We don't know anybody there. I, I got, we should. Um, I don't like to go to those things by myself because that forces you to sit down and talk to people that you never would otherwise. Um, you have to be a dog person to go to the dog shelter. Dinner though, right? Yeah, you don't have to be a dog person. No, I think but it is like do. it is like a. They say they you know. 
you say that these are people that you that, that it's good to at least know who you're talking to when you do have to talk to them because when you do have to talk to them it's going to be two in the morning or something like that if you're if, if you're going you need a buddy out there all right buddy yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bring me. I make friends everywhere. All right. yeah. Thank you. Nice. Right. You do make friends everywhere, though. I agree with that statement. Um, and then the other thing was the fisheries and wildlife stuff. Um, their bio, the bio booklet. Just take a look at that. Um, okay. um, the other thing, Paul, Paul Mark, we got, we got his letter. Um, Mick, a lot of you know, we used to always work with through John Gold, who is the chief of staff for um, Adam Hines, and he's now the chief of staff for Paul Mark. Um, so that's good continuity for Conway, at least. And, um, but he, he did send us a letter with everybody's email in the dockets and everybody's phone numbers. and encourages each select board member that to reach out to them if there's a potential legislative solution to a problem you're encountering. <laughs> or if you have any question about the state budget. So uh, we'll make sure that this is in your mail slot at some point. Uh, anything else, Ronnie? Um, not on my part, although, um... Kathy just let me know that the shelf life for Narcan has changed from 36 to 48 months. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay. Um, and we do have a, um, we have a um, transfer station uh, meeting here Thursday. That's fine. Correct. Sure that. Yeah. And I will have the Zoom working. Yeah. Right. What time is that? Uh, oh, it starts at um, six, right? Yeah. Six. It should be on the hopefully on the select board. Uh, five thirty. Oh, it's five. But I have it on my calendar. It's five thirty. But I just told myself I had to be there. Okay. <laughs> will, will, will somebody post that on next door as well? Oh, uh, okay. It's a good idea. Yeah, man, that's like like Facebook for really old people. Yeah, that's it. That's that's that's, that's complex. So that's where I close to six, 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 seven. Yeah, six to seven. Thank you. Yeah. Um, that's where I posted the, the transfer station being closed was on there just and for a whole day. My my email was going off with people saying, Thank you, Granny, for posting that. Oh, it was so nice that you post that. Oh, I already got the town notice, but it's nice to know that there's a need to have a place to register. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I cannot believe that. I don't know. To me, that's just a place for. People. You know, it's wonderful to have more than one option to yes. in touch with people. Yes. Yeah. We'll use all that we can. Yes. That's Plus, right. just to make plugs, the Highway Facebook is back up and running. Yes. And um, Town Clerk, of course, is always posting on Facebook. So so I'll, I'll be presenting for the transfer station Which meeting. Great oh, great. thanks. So I'm basically just going to have a talk. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm basically going to be going through that PowerPoint. I'm not going to try to persuade anybody to do anything. It's just there for the information. Yeah. So, you know, just wanted to put that out there. Yeah, it's very nice. Really appreciative. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that was my selfish. My only critique was the, the thing where you said that we, we spent 100000 on it last year. Plus another something, something, something per month for uh, compost. Compost for yes. compost, mm -hmm. and I would be like, just add them two together. Well, so the thing is, it wasn't budgeted that. last year, uh, so that's why Chris put it in there like that yeah. because the true budget, the true budget is one hundred, would have been that plus the five ten. But we didn't, we didn't have compost at the time because they stopped servicing us for a while. But, you know, I, you know, I wonder whether the if, if, we do anything, did it did we count on new stream of revenue have that in the budget? The only thing I wanted to ask you all about maybe making a revision or at least taking it away is on one of the final pages I have um a, a, basically an example of how it could look going forward as far as using stickers and whatnot. I didn't change the price of the decal on that. I did. I mean, it, 
where it said no contractor bags, I feel like there's going to be a lot of pushback. I, I personally do too. Um, Jan, was, Jan was very adamant about uh, thinking that people don't use contractor bags and I do. Yeah, I know. I do too. Um, and I'm fine with like, you know, having like a larger, but I, I just, that was my, like, that's going to be it. I feel like that's going to be an issue. I originally had multiple stickers, I believe, three for a contractor bag. Yeah, it would be at least that because the number yeah. of bags, but that was the thing is that, you know, trying to figure out a normal bag that you price normally is a 30, 30, 33 gallon, right? Yeah. Somewhere in that range. So two kitchen bags that are like 15, 16, 17 would fit into one of those. So that's why it got changed to make right. the sticker price the same. But some towns, I just noticed Northampton is doing bags again because I was someplace and they're selling the bags and they do little tiny bags and they do, you know, so you can set it up any way you want. Because that's yeah. another revenue stream. Those are not revenue neutral. In the towns that adopt that, those are not revenue neutral. Well, that, that's that, correct. That is a profit center. That is. And yeah. that is an indirect taxation. Cowardly. They ask money from people just straight up, straight yeah. up ask for it. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. yeah. At all. Just to charge for the bags. I don't like even having that bag because it's you know, the like Greenfields bags are terrible. Oh, yeah. making oh yeah, yeah, making people pay for that. Yeah. Right. Like stickers. It's it's one thing, like actually making people buy specific bags is yeah, that's kind of no. But that that was the one thing I could take that off the presentation just or yeah, I mean I I just like like that's where I feel like there's gonna be pushback and, yeah. and from my husband. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you right now, like, I will not get rid of it. <laughs> Protesting. Be be <laughs> that's something yeah, I, can, um, I can definitely go back to. But but we talk, I mean, I think that's all. That's I, I think that's how we kind of have to frame this. Is like we're we're the last town that hasn't done this. We're we're trying to figure it out, you know. So we're going to do this for a year. So maybe you know, you know, we're just it's it, it's an evolution. It's a, it's a process would, and we're oh, yeah I, I would say because we didn't have it on the agenda to discuss so yeah. I think we should probably um put that on Monday's agenda as a oh I'm sorry yes going over feedback from the public forum got it okay yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. got it in the first public forum yes so we have more than one yes that's right see how yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so with that, uh, next meeting is next Monday, the 13th, um, at this same location, same bat time, same bat town. With the working uh, Zoom. <laughs> yeah, with, yeah, the eternal promise of a working Zoom. Right, for us to be back from uh, Florida by then. All right, so motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.